it's been a long, highly anticipated wait, but Apple has officially offered yet another year of full software support for iPhone 6S and 6S Plus users. So let's go ahead and take a look at what new features it got, and most importantly, how well it runs. What's up guys, Brady here, and today I'm going to be giving you a quick look at iOS 14 running on my iPhone 6S. This is nothing special, nothing high production value. I literally just made this to get this out there as quick as I could so that you could see how it runs you know, as early as you can if you want to install it for yourself or plan on doing so later. So with that being said, no fancy transitions, no 4K, let's do this. All right, so diving into iOS 14, first off we have the hallmark feature, the redesigned home screen. The first major obvious change here is proper widget support. Finally, the iPhone has access to dynamic movable widgets to more easily provide up-to-date information right at your fingertips. And it's really simple to add these widgets to your home screen. All you have to do is enter edit mode and tap the plus icon in the top right corner, at which point you're greeted with this menu which allows you to scroll through different widget choices to add to your home screen. You have things such as batteries, the smart stack feature, which basically dynamically scrolls through widgets depending on certain circumstances and times of the day, and of course the other ones like the traditional music app, um, podcasts, screen time, Siri, and other things there. You can also customize the size of certain widgets, by the way. You've got this large one right here, or the mid-size one, or the very small one. They also move around and according to the layout of your home screen app icons, so they make room for each other, which is pretty nice. Um, just a fair warning though, you can push your apps over to another page, so make sure you don't do that if you don't want to do that. But other than that, everything works really well with them too. Here's that smart stack widget, by the way, what I was talking about. You can actually scroll through certain widgets on your home screen while it's not in wiggle mode, which is kind of nice. There are also some other new capabilities here, such as the ability to add or remove app pages when it actually works. Because as you can see, there are several bugs in this developer beta. But the principle would be for you to double tap this. There you go, now it works. Um, you tap your page that you want to enable and it gives you a check icon. And now you go out of it and you now have that page. Next up, let's talk about the app library. The other major change to the home screen comes in the form of the app library. The app library is basically a searchable list of all of your apps aggregated to one location, or you can scroll through it if you want to. It works pretty much either way. Um, but if you go to the main app library page, you have your groups of icons here. And these are basically sort of grouped together based off of AI, and they show your most used apps or what apps you might want to use next. And of course you have different groups here like Twitter and the social, um, I just added that. And as you can see, it's, it's quite, everything's a little buggy. There are random touch registrations every once in a while. Like I accidentally opened Twitter earlier, but down here you've got things like your settings and utilities, your watch app and other things here you can expand on. I do have reduce motion turned on to help with performance. And you've got things like the tips icon down here. This honestly seems to most resemble Android's app drawer, which I'm not opposed to having on iOS. I've actually wanted something like that for years, and it's nice because it allows you to really clean up your home screen, put what you want on there. Oh, you can also hide apps, by the way, which will allow you to add them to library or delete them as you did before. I accidentally just deleted notes. Wow, that, that was, oh, but it didn't delete itself. Again, multiple bugs just around here. Oh, there we go. Cool. Now it does something. The widgets across the system are also completely redesigned. You have more information available like the battery widget. Um, the stocks is more of a mini version of it. Yeah, I would highly recommend not installing this on your main device. Um, it runs okay for the most part, but when it comes to just basic tasks, as you can see, I'm getting these random touch registrations here and that's my location. So we're not going to show that. Um, Another new feature is app clips, which I can't really show you at the moment because that's going to be something that developers have to update their apps for. And the same comes with things like iMessages in the sense that there are a lot of new grouping features. And of course, here's the Memoji, which you can add a mask and you can do several different things too. But some of these things are just going to need an ecosystem and you know other users to develop for them in time to actually show off. Another major improvement to iOS 14 comes in the form of a brand new Siri interface. What's the weather like? It's currently raining up 72 degrees. So as you can see, it doesn't cover up the entire screen. Instead, banner icons show certain responses or context of information that you need, or it's displayed down there, which I actually ran into a little bit of a weird bug earlier. I'll try and see if I can replicate it. How are you? I'm happy to 
Okay, there it is. So as you can see, it showed my input, but her responses are like grayed out, which I'm really not sure what's up with that. But again, just another reason you shouldn't be installing this developer beta like I did, because I make dumb decisions so you don't have to. One thing that really surprised me about iOS 14 on the success as well, besides the fact that it even got it, I mean, this phone was released in 2015 and just gained an additional year of support, meaning this phone will be officially discontinued in 2021, pretty much six years after it was originally released. Not bad at all, honestly. But iOS 14 brought a lot of the major features on pretty much every other phone to the success with the exception of certain things like car keys, which, you know, that's something in the wallet app that you're not gonna get unless you have, I believe it was a 10S and up. Correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments below, but the home screen widgets and the messages features, as well as the Memoji improvements are all here. Speaking of Memojis, you also have several new customization options, including face coverings, which in the day and age we live in, I would guess is not a bad thing to include at all. So now your Memoji can practice social distancing even in very crowded group chats, I guess. Next up, we have the brand new call bar feature interface. So as you can see now, I have multiple duplicate contexts of myself first off, but it does not cover the entire screen when someone is calling. It's quite handy too, I'll go ahead and mute this, because you can actually drag it down to get to the full interface as you had before and you know decline it, or you can swipe it away to get rid of it. As for the performance aspect of developer beta one, I've actually noticed it to be better in some ways than I was 13, but also worse in others. Obviously through the course of this, you've already seen several different bugs with the interface that kind of just pop up. And I've seen a few other people in encounter random resprings. But for the most part, the 6S is actually decently snappy on iOS 14. Apps load up pretty quickly and you've got access to everything that you would need to have access to. Another thing that has really surprised me has been the lack of battery drain and overheating, which I kind of had an issue with in iOS 13.5, believe it or not. This phone has not been jailbroken during the course of iOS 13's release, so I was not running any proprietary software or anything that could have caused it, but it was just not running very well on that latest build of 13. Not a problem here on iOS 14 though, for some reason. Also, nice. Next up, you have the new picture-in-picture -picture feature, which was ported over from iPadOS. So currently, I can only show this off in the Apple TV app, but if you were to tap a movie, say this one right here, I'm not going to say the name of it in regards to getting copy striked. Um, if you tap right here, you get the picture-in-picture -picture interface, which follows you around your OS. You can resize it a bit, move it around wherever you want, open a text conversation, um, and as you can see, everything seems to work just fine. Now, of course, there are also several other little minor features and tweaks that are built into iOS 14, such as new animations with notifications, um, the ability to set a default browser, which is quite nice. You can also do that for your email app as well. But today, I just wanted to cover the performance of iOS 14 on the 6S, what it mostly got and what it didn't get. And for the most part, of course, you didn't get the car keys, but everything else is here. So that's kind of nice. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this first look of iOS 14 running on the 6S. Um, would I recommend installing it right now? No. Wait for the public beta, which is coming out in July. This is the developer beta one. I actually installed it through the developer profile down here, which um, we don't need to talk about how I got that, but you know, it worked. So I would definitely just wait a couple of weeks at least until Apple releases the public beta, which will be much more polished. and. It'll also be helpful because then you can actually see what Siri is saying to you. If you enjoyed this video, definitely consider leaving a like below and letting me know. I've also got a much more polished Why I Bought video coming out in the next two weeks, so expect to see a trailer for that pretty soon. Are you running or do you plan on running iOS 14 beta on your iPhone 6S or 6S Plus? Do you like iOS 14? What do you think of the new home screen redesign? Leave a comment down below and let me know. And if you want to hear more from me, definitely consider hitting that big red subscribe button down below and bell notification icon next to it so you can always be in the know when I upload new videos. And as always, see you in the next one.